think I've got the hardest, hardest job. Thank you. Um, it was just amazing. Like Mary, I'm not very good off the cuff, so um, your husband's advice would, would hit a hard head with me, so I do tend to prefer to read um, my comments because I think I can be a little more articulate that way. Um, and like Catherine, I did not get this thing printed out like I normally would, so, so let's hope it goes well. Um, good morning. Can, can I hear okay? Okay. So Pope Benedict wrote, and I, I, I've heard it comes from him, God writes straight with cro crooked lines. I think most of us have heard that line. And I, that describes my life to a T. And I think it's an especially apt observation of the lives of those who discern that God calls them to be his own in the midst of the world as dedicated singles. I'm gonna speak about a vocation that I think God may be calling more to today. It's a vocation that lends itself to shaping culture, a culture that's rapidly becoming a post-Christian culture. I'll be publishing a book in a couple months entitled Single for a Greater Purpose, A Hidden Joy in the Catholic Church. I, mean, and I've, I do have some flyers if anyone is interested. So throughout history, the church has been enriched by a small minority who live out their lives in dedicated service to the kingdom without marrying or without entering structured religious communities. The lay state, most especially marriage, has received much attention and its value has been strongly emphasized since the Second Vatican Council's proclamation of the universal call to holiness. An underappreciated consequence of this newfound, very well-deserved and needed appreciation of sacramental marriage is that the lay state has become viewed primarily in terms of the marriage state. Pastorally, singles have fallen through the cracks. At the same time, the number of singles in society and within the church itself has exploded. And I know many of you here know that all too well. The U.S. Census Bureau reported in 2015 that 109 million Americans, 45% of adult Americans, are unmarried, of which 63% have never been married. To compare, in 1950, some 33% of American adults were unmarried, with 20 or so million never having been married. So today, today we have 50 million more American adults who are single and never married than there were two generations ago, 50 million. Reasons for the dramatic increase in singles are thought generally to fall into two camps, moral and economic. The moral explanation goes something like this. A disintegration of sexual mores throughout society combined with a materialistic, <coughs> consumeristic, self-centered mindset has led many to forego marriage, children, and the inherent sacrifices of family life in exchange for libertine lives of so-called freedom. An economic explanation might be summed up like this. In the aggregate, men are falling behind financially, and without well-paying jobs, they make poor marriage material. Now that women have greater professional opportunities, the economic incentive to marry has been greatly reduced, even for those who want children. There's a third less talked about spiritual explanation for the dramatic rise in singles. The breakdown of the family and the moral disintegration of culture has spawned great numbers of poorly, poorly formed, wounded souls who are psychologically and spiritually unable to enter into true sacramental marriages. In an astute observation, a friend likened the lack of marriage form people today to the periods after World War I and II in which witnessed a sudden spike in single women due to the high war casualties. Could there be another positive, transcendent reason for the increase in singles? Might God be calling more Catholics to a deeper communion with him, to live as lay celibates and bring gospel values to a sex-crazed, increasingly secularized culture? 
words and facts have become devalued in our media-saturated culture, except for Catherine's words. <laughs> what catches the attention of a distracted world are lives authentically and joyfully lived. I think we just witnessed that with, with Monique. How powerful the witness of men and women who forego what society places such a high premium on, namely sex, in order to find themselves more fully and exclusively to Jesus Christ, leading sacrificial yet creative lives of joy and elan in today's secular world. Priests and religious have historically played this witness role, but people tend to imitate what is closer, more familiar to them. In light of the rapid growth of unchurched men and women, about a third of today's millennials, might joyful, dedicated singles living outwardly normal lives, woven into the fabric of secular life, serve as relevant witnesses to many parts of our culture? Does a post-Christian society have a greater need of hidden vocations, hearkening back to the early years of the church? To speculate further, might God be calling more to lay celibacy to serve as spiritual warriors against the prevailing sin of the day, impurity? Once the Christian persecutions died down after Emperor Constantine's conversion, St. Gregory the Great taught that chastity served as a substitute for martyrdom. Quote, this is from St. Gregory the Great. Now, though the error of persecution is gone, yet our peace has its martyrdom, because though we bend not the neck to the sword, yet with a spiritual weapon we slay fleshly desires in our hearts. Hence, a chastity dedicated to God demands strong and noble souls, souls ready to do battle and conquer for the sake of the kingdom of heaven." Unquote. There's been a fair amount of discussion in recent years as to whether or not there is a single lay vocation in the eyes of the church. Singles do not occupy a formal, canonically de designated state, as do couples living in the state of marriage or as ordained or vowed men and women living in clerical or religious states. Formal vocations as defined by the church have traditionally and canonically meant one of these permanent states of life. But vocation can also be understood in broader terms. Some who refute the existence of a vocational call to live as a single layperson suggest that singles have either missed their vocation to the priesthood or religious life or are too picky, selfish, undesirable to get married. Whether it is God's permissive or active will that so many in the church today are single is not the point. Our most important vocation <clears throat> is to love and serve God and we do so by living in hope, allowing ourselves to be led by God irrespective of our, our state of life. This daily responsiveness to divine calls is a true Christian vocation and one based upon the graces of baptism. Living in a state of anxiety, <clears throat> waiting for something better to come along, means that deep down one has not truly accepted being led by God. Whether one is called to be single or one is single by circumstance is irrelevant to the fact that all of us, by, through our baptism and confirmation, are given the graces to become saints. With a pastoral sensitivity, sensitivity, <clears throat> excuse me, sensi sensitivity um, and clarity and practicality, um, I'm gonna also quote St. Francis de Sales. I just love him. He defines vocation as, quote, nothing other than the firm and constant will possessed by the person called to want to serve God in the manner and in the place where the divine majesty calls her. This is the best mark one could have to know when a vocation is true. So that, I guess, flower being planted in a place, that's, that's this. According to DeSales, a true vocation consists of three elements constancy, a desire to love and serve God, and an embrace of the circumstances in which God calls us. Vocation can also be thought of as a gift. 
a response to God's love for us by the gifting of ourselves to another. A man is, man is the only creature on earth which God willed for himself. Excuse me, let me start this again. Man, who is the only creature on earth which God willed for itself, cannot fully find himself except through a sincere gift of himself. And that's from Gaudium and Spes. True gifts are long lasting, freely and joyfully given, and appropriate to our particular circumstances. Formal, canonically defined vocations to the priestly, religious, or married states entail a permanent loving gift of self directed to God or to a spouse, normally expressed publicly. Lay singles called to live celibate lives can love Christ in an unencumbered, creative way amidst the secular world. And those who have discerned that God is calling them to himself and who choose to respond by freely giving themselves permanently and exclusively to God may express this through private vows, promises, or permanent commitment. And due to our natural emotions, making a commitment in the presence of a trusted priest or spiritual director, even if private, helps one persevere and offers mental stability. This is not a formal vocation as traditionally understood by the church, but for many, this is a vocational call from God within the lay state. The dedicated single life is a vocation that is hidden and little understood, if not devalued not only by broader society, but also by many Catholics, including priests and religious. Indeed, most people feel a bit sorry for single faithful Catholics, even those called to this unique vocation. And for many, it's not a life that was planned for or dreamed of. Many discern that Jesus Christ called them to them himself later in life, often after disappointments. And in an address to women of Italy delivered in war-ravished um, Europe in October of 45, Pope Pius XII, who's written so beautifully about religious and celibacy, he says, when one thinks upon the maidens and the women who voluntarily renounce marriage in order to consecrate themselves to a higher life of contemplation, of sacrifice, and of charity, a luminous word comes immediately to the lips, vocation. This vocation, this call of love, makes itself felt in very diverse manners. But also, the young Christian woman remaining unmarried in spite of herself, who nevertheless trusts in the providence of the Heavenly Father, recognizes in the vicissitudes of life the voice of the Master, it is the master and he is calling you. That's John eleven twenty eight. 28. She responds, she renounces the beloved dream of her adolescence and her youth to have a faithful companion in life, to form a family. And in the impossibility of marriage, she recognizes her vocation. Then, with a broken but submissive heart, she also gives her whole self to a more noble and diverse good works. Celibacy has traditionally been viewed, unquote. Celibacy has traditionally been viewed as a more spiritually fruitful way of living one's life. And theological writings throughout the ages so beautifully describe the fecundity of celibacy. I suspect the humble nature of lay celibacy gives this vocation the potential to be exceedingly fruitful. And if someone asked me to pick a patron saint of dedicated lay singles, it'd be Simon of Cyrene. Compelled by the Romans to help Jesus carry his cross, Simon at first resisted this extraordinarily privileged call to walk at Jesus' side alone, just him and Jesus. But then after some moments struggling shoulder to shoulder to Jesus, Simon came to wholeheartedly embrace the cross and to love Jesus in a personal, uniquely ordered way. Much of what has been written about Catholic singles has a woe is me kind of dimension to it. And indeed, Pope Pius XII in that quote struck a doleful note. But as a Catholic who is discerned, and I'm almost done, my time just, I'm almost done. 
As a Catholic who has discerned after many years that God has been calling me quietly but persistently to be his own as a lay single, I hadn't come across much that spoke positively to this vocation, despite the fact that Holy Scriptures and the church history are filled with extraordinary single laity exclusively dedicated to God. I personally know many people um, who are discerning, who have discerned this vocation. But I also know of untold numbers of Catholic singles who feel bereft and directionless, even unwelcome and misunderstood. Pope Francis speaks often about the need to reach out to the peripheries, and there may be no existential periphery greater than that inhabited by many single Catholics. I think more attention needs to be paid to what God is creating amidst the rubble of our troubled post-Christian world. Holy, creative souls who love his church and are receptive to his grace. These are God's free agents, so to speak. I'll finish by just saying from my own trajectory, I spent years asking God to send me a spouse like St. Joseph. Then I prayed for patience then holy indifference, and then I, that I might embrace God's will for my life rather than my own will, and that will is crazily strong. It finally became clear to me that Jesus was calling me to himself, and now my prayers are filled with heartfelt thanks. I thank God over and over and over again for this privileged, joy-filled vocation, and I count myself extraordinarily blessed. Through it all, Jesus had the greatest patience with me. Um, I will end it here. And um, this is, I would say, what's allowed me to be in the world um, while also retaining a really deep and necessary prayer life. Um, and I'll just reiterate what I said. The most important thing is being on our knees. Thank you.